Chicago is a destination that has something for everyone. This beautiful city offers so much that over 55 million people visit the Windy City each year. And if you are planning a trip to Chicago, then there are a few things that you must know before you go so you can get the most out of your Chicago experience. This is Vacation Guides USA and welcome to my Chicago Vacation Guide where you're going to learn everything you need to know about this beautiful city that hugs the banks of Lake Michigan. Michigan. Starting off with my pre-travel recommendations. Why should you visit Chicago? And the answer is pretty simple. This city is massive and features some of the tallest skyscrapers in the entire world. The food scene is on point and there are so many must-see attractions that you can only experience in Chicago. But one thing that I love most about Chicago is that the city is really clean and doesn't feel as dirty as let's say New York City. Maybe it's just me, but every time I go to New York City, I feel a little grimy, a little dirty. However, when I walk through the streets of Chicago, I do not feel near as dirty or grimy. Know the time zone. In case you are wondering, Chicago is located in the central time zone which would play a minor difference if you do not live in the same time zone. When are the best times to visit Chicago? Now I have a serious question. Do you enjoy freezing your tail off in the winter? If so, I recommend visiting from November through March. However, if you do not like the cold, then I recommend visiting in mid to late April through October. How many days do you need to explore Chicago? And everyone is different when it comes to this, but I recommend at least four days and three nights for you to explore the area. Getting to Chicago. If you are looking at flying, then you're gonna be able to fly into O'Hare or the Midway Airport. The Midway Airport is located just a little bit closer to downtown, but both offer tons of transportation options. And for what it's worth, O'Hare is the larger of the two airports. Getting around Chicago. And now it's time for my first of many money savings tip. Do not rent a car unless you plan on exploring outside of downtown. Not only will the rental car cost you more money to rent and fill up the gas tank for it, you will also have to pay for parking wherever you go in downtown Chicago. Trust me, it's not very fun. That is why I recommend the following options. Buses. While you could take a ride on a bus to get from one spot to the next, I personally feel as if these other options are much more enjoyable and less stressful. Uber and Lyft. Most of you by now have used either of these companies to get somewhere, and while you're in Chicago, it is a great and cheap option. Taxis. No matter where you are in Chicago, there's a yellow taxi nearby. And finally, the trains. Unlike the New York City subway system, Chicago's is located above the ground and better known as the L. If you are traveling to or from the two major airports, O'Hare and Midway, then the L is the way to go. And for your convenience, here's a map of the L so you can get an idea of where the routes go. I also highly recommend downloading the Chicago Transit app for schedules and maps. Trust me, this is a lifesaver. Where are the best places to stay? Chicago is a tricky place to look for a hotel. And the reason why I say that is if you want to stay somewhere in the heart of the city, then you're most likely going to spend anywhere from $200 to $500 a night, with most hotels being north of 350 bucks a night. If you stay on the outskirts, then the price does get better. So it really is all about your budget and where you want to stay. Money savings tip. I recommend checking out Priceline for the best deals so you can get an idea of where you want to stay that also aligns with your budget. And now it's time for yet another money savings tip. When you visit during the week, you will find that the rates are much more affordable for hotels, condos, and Airbnbs. The prices go up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Now before I go over all the awesome things that Chicago offers, here are some fun facts about the Windy City that you probably did not know. Starting off, did you know that Chicago is known as the birthplace of the skyscraper? Also, in 1871, a massive fire destroyed much of the city center, leaving behind only a few structures. 
The general Chicago area is home to over 200 different neighborhoods, with each one having its own character and charm. Now if you are enjoying and finding my Chicago vacation guide to be helpful, then all I ask that you do is take a second and give this video a like, because that is the best way you can help support the channel. Also, when you're done watching this video, please check out my other vacation guides to places like Myrtle Beach and Destin, Florida. And you can also find those links in the description of this video. Now it's time to learn about the best things to see and do in Chicago. If you are not scared of heights, then I highly recommend visiting one of the observation decks. This is the Willis Tower, and the sky deck and the ledge are awesome. You're going to be able to take in some of the best views of Chicago from the tallest observation deck in the entire city. For thrill seekers out there, you have to take a leap of faith and experience the glass floor ledge. Trust me, my palms are sweaty just thinking about it because it is that nerve wracking. 360 Chicago While not the tallest observation deck, you will still get some great views of the Chicago skyline. And this observation deck is 94 floors up and you're going to find some amazing views of Lake Michigan as well as the rest of the skyscrapers. And I recommend trying to visit during a sunset because sunsets up there are absolutely beautiful. Now here's something that you probably would not associate with Chicago, but the city has 25 different beaches along 26 miles of shoreline. And the Oak Street Beach is the closest to downtown. Money savings tip. Admission to the beaches is free and most of them offer lifeguards during the summer. The Art Institute of Chicago. You're looking at one of the oldest and largest art museums in the US. And just to show you how popular this must-see attraction is, over 1.5 million visitors experience the art museum each year. The famous Field Museum. You're looking at one of the largest natural history museums in the entire nation, and this place really is a must-see attraction. Especially if you love dinosaurs. And let's be real, how can you not? So in that case, you have to check out Sue, which is the largest and most complete T-Rex skeleton ever discovered. Grant Park. New York City offers Central Park, and while not as large, Grant Park, in my opinion, is nicer, and you're going to love scrolling through the 319 acres the park offers. Here is where you're going to find the Buckingham Fountain, which was featured in the Married with Children show and the National Lampoon's Vacation movie. This fountain operates from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. from mid-April through mid-October, with a water show scheduled at the top of every hour. Now this attraction is very weather dependent, but if you can, I cannot recommend enough checking out the Tours and Boats Architectural Tours. Trust me, you're going to get the best views of Chicago from the river below and it's just so much fun to do and I cannot recommend it enough. You will find a whole slew of different types of tours, whether they're on land or water, that are going to give you some great views of Chicago. So if you enjoy this type of thing, then I highly recommend looking further into it. The Museum of Science and Industry. This is such a cool place to scroll through and explore. You are going to love their full-size replica coal mine. Seriously, this place is great. You are looking at Cloudgate, aka the Bean Sculpture, which also happens to be the most iconic sculpture in Chicago and is a must visit for anyone. And I know that you want to get a selfie in front of that giant bean just like everyone else does. The Chicago Theater. Built in 1921, the Chicago Theater is home to concerts, plays, Broadway shows, and so much more. I recommend checking out their website for a show schedule. One of the most famous ballparks in the entire world is located just north of the city. And if the Chicago Cubs are in town during your visit, then you have to go check out the stadium. It truly is a one-of-a-kind experience. The Chicago Riverwalk. This is one of the best ways to take in Chicago. You are going to enjoy a beautiful walk along the south bank of the Chicago River. Money savings tip. If you have time in your schedule, then I highly recommend visiting the Lincoln Park Zoo. This wonderful zoo has a lot of animals and exhibits, and you should really consider checking it out. Because the best part is, you cannot beat the price. That is because it is free to enter the zoo. And in this day and age, that is just crazy. 
the massive Shedd Aquarium. This aquarium is located right along the banks of Lake Michigan and makes for the perfect rainy day activity or if you're in need of doing something indoors. But if you are like me and enjoy going to aquariums, then I highly recommend it because it's gonna be one of the best ones that you've ever seen before. The Navy Pier, known as Chicago's waterfront destination. And honestly, how could you disagree? You're gonna find some amazing restaurants and attractions located on the pier. Everyone in your family or group is going to enjoy the views and entertainment that Navy Pier offers. Money savings tip. If you're wanting to do more than just one of the best attractions in Chicago, like the ones I just listed, then I highly recommend checking out the Chicago City Pass. This City Pass allows you to save 48% off of ticket prices, so that way you can enjoy five of the best attractions in Chicago at a discounted rate. And for your convenience, here's a look at the current pricing and the list of attractions that are on the pass. You will also find a link to this page in the description of this video. For the thrill seekers, you gotta check out Six Flags Great America and Hurricane Harbor, a fantastic theme park that is located around 46 miles away from downtown Chicago. This park offers 15 thrilling roller coasters, a wonderful water park in Hurricane Harbor, and dozens of rides for the little ones. If you love theme parks and amusement parks, then I highly recommend fitting this park into your Chicago itinerary. Now let's talk about things to do on Lake Michigan. If you love the water, and depending on the time of year, of course, then these water attractions are right up your alley. From kayaking to fishing, getting out on Lake Michigan some way is something that I highly recommend. Chicago Water Sport Rentals. Here you're gonna find jet ski and boat rentals if you really wanna go all out on the water. They also offer kayak and stand-up paddleboard rentals, which are both great activities to do on the water. Chicago Boat Rentals. If you're looking for a great place to rent a boat, then you have to check out Chicago Boat Rentals. You're gonna find a great selection of boats to choose from. Storm Warning Fishing Charters. If you enjoy some good fishing, then you're gonna love going out with the crew from Storm Morning Fishing Charters. Great people, lots of good fish, and great memories. Kingfisher Chicago Charters. You're going to love these two amazing captains that own three beautiful boats and offer a whole slew of different charters for you to choose from. Here are the must visit restaurants that I recommend because Chicago is home to some of the most delicious restaurants that you're ever going to experience. And since Chicago is known for its pizza, I'm also gonna share with you my recommendations for the top five best places to get pizza. And for your convenience, these restaurants are all located within this area here, right in the center of downtown Chicago. With that said, here are my recommendations for best restaurants in Chicago. The Chicago Firehouse Restaurant featuring a 4.5 star rating on Google. Goodwin's Restaurant, a 4.5 star rating on Google. Weber Grill Restaurant, 4.4 out of 5 star rating on Google. The 676 Restaurant and Bar, 4.5 out of 5 on Google. And finally, the Purple Pig Restaurant featuring a 4.6 rating on Google. No matter what you're craving, you're gonna find it in downtown Chicago. Now here's a fun fact about Chicago, and that is, when you order a Chicago dog, you will be eating the best hot dog you've ever had before. Seriously, just take a look at how amazing this looks. And if you're looking for one of the best places to grab a Chicago dog, then I highly recommend the Devil Dogs on State, featuring a 4.5 star rating on Google. Chicago is also known for its pizza, and since I personally love pizza and can eat it every day, here are the top five places for pizza in Chicago. Giordano's, featuring a 4.5 rating on Google. You're going to fall in love with this deep dish pizza. Trust me, it's that good. I also recommend Robert's Pizza and Dough Company, featuring a 4.4 rating on Google, as well as Pizzeria Uno, 4.3 rating on Google, Lou Malnati's Pizzeria, featuring a 4.5 rating on Google, and Pizzeria Portofino, that has a 4.4 out of 5 rating on Google. Money savings tip. Eating out is obviously expensive, so I recommend when you arrive, head to the grocery store to pick up some snacks that you can carry in your pocket, purse, or your bag to hold you over until lunch or dinner time. 
Chicago sporting events. No matter the time of year, you can enjoy a live sporting event in Chicago. While the teams right now aren't really that great, it's still a fun experience to go check out a game. Chicago's Best Nightlife From bars, clubs, dance clubs, comedy clubs, and late night entertainment, Chicago really does offer it all. And no matter where you are in the area, you will find something fun to do if you're looking to party the night away. Where are the best places to shop? Now while you might think Chicago is only known for the Cubs, skyscrapers, and its pizza, you might not realize but Chicago is also known for its shopping. And it's hard to go wrong with all the stores along the 13 blocks of Michigan Avenue that is better known as the Magnificent Mile. This is by far the best area for shopping in the Chicago area. What to do when it rains or snows. Chicago's weather has a wide range to it. Some days it's really hot, and then others it's really rainy or just cold and icy. So here is a list of great things to do that are located indoors. The Shedd Aquarium, the Museum of Science and Industry, and the Field Museum. Now while you could do an observation attraction like the Sky Deck, I recommend waiting if you can because if it's rainy or cloudy, you're definitely not going to get as good of views from up there. Now I need your help. What location would you like me to cover for my next vacation guide? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about Chicago, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to try to answer them the best I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Be adventurous, spontaneous, and most importantly, never stop traveling.